Okay, let's see here. Um, Dio, Physics Mazi, San Mia, and Donisha. Hmm. This is the next. I believe that is mind. No, 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 not mind. Soul. Wait. Souls. Plural. Yeah, souls. So, do you physics, Mazin, San, and Mia, and Donisha means. Oh, jeez. Um. Two souls together as one entity. Huh. How utterly compelling and mysterious. One would think people obsessed with mythology and arts would be a bit more creative. How much more of this greeting card spiritualism do I have to translate anyways? <sighs> if I read one more line, that sounds like something out of a Spark Notes version of Twilight. I'm punching out. Oh, hey. Is this a social call, or are you here on business? I figured. Uh, trash can's in the usual spot. You can help yourself. Uh, try to sidestep the boxes if you can. Um, you'll see it's mostly full of uh, orange peels, energy, energy bars, wrappers, and en water bottles tonight. I've been here for a while. Yeah, Dr. Tav. Just got here back in the morning. If it's, it's too bad. <laughs> I'm sure you're probably enjoying having one less office to clean on your shift. Not vacation, per se. She was on an expedition, scoped out some ruins, searched for some artifacts, met up with some contacts in her field. It's not Miami Beach, but I can think of worse things to do over spring break. Well, according to her itinerary, she was going to Attica? No, not the prison. Attica, the administration region of Greece that encompasses the metropolitan area of Athens. Yeah, I, I know. Right, it's a lot. Or, it's a lot. But she came in this afternoon to drop off some books and stuff, hence the clutter, but then she went home to get reacquainted with her cats and sleep off her jet lag. Well, she had emailed me and assigned me a few jobs upon her return, translating some miscellaneous inscriptions, proofreading her notes, and verifying the historic accuracy of some of her findings. Uh, I normally would not work on a Friday, and certainly not during break, but from what I've heard, Dr. Tav may have just had a potential museum showcase on the horizon. You better believe I'm gonna claim some recognition too, right? <laughs> you call it being a shameless parasite, I call it being a fiendishly ambitious research assistant. <laughs> Incidentally, did you know the word parasite is deprived from Greek parasitios? It literally means the one who eats from another table. <laughs> Gosh, I have been doing this job way too long. Still, it's better than vacuuming floors, emptying trash cans, and cleaning bathrooms all night. <laughs> uh, come on, I didn't mean it that offensively. In fact, hey, credit is where credit is due. The last six months, I don't think I've ever seen this building so clean. My allergies and slight misphobia are deeply grateful for your keen eyes. <laughs> Elbow grease and possibility OCD tens tendencies. I'm not looking down on you. It's just what you do after hours outside of class is not something my family would ever approve of. <laughs> you kidding me? My father is a high-profile attorney, and my mother is vice president of the academic and student affairs at this very university. They would never allow their precious, sweet little overachiever and contaminant 
his resume with any occupation that involved manual labor and did not guarantee a slew of networked opportunities upon graduation. <laughs> Look, aside from the colors of our collars, um, we're not all any different. No, to be fair, I actually look like a dual art history archaeology major. I can't say that I'm getting communication studies from you. <laughs> exactly, we're just two graduate students working towards our respective degrees with part-time jobs on the side. Yeah, and creative projects in your case. <laughs> How's your novel coming along? Really? Hey, you finished it? Wow. What happens now? Oh, okay. An agent. Makes sense. How many queries have you sent out? And how many have responded? Nah. Uh, well, hey, don't lose hope, alright? There's bound to be someone out there who will appreciate the sci-fi epic that's... How do you describe it? Like, J.R. Token? <laughs> and, uh, Michael Christian? Like, if they were roommates. <laughs> hey, just gotta keep pounding the pavement, alright? Keep me posted, though. I'm curious to see if it ever gets published. Especially since it's, uh, began as a creative writing assignment almost six years ago. <laughs> Sorry, it's, um, not that I don't find you deeply stimulating. I just have been here this whole this afternoon and I am so tired. <sighs> Look, I'm only about two-thirds finished and I can't let anything spill over into the weekend. I have a date tomorrow night. Oh, um, just some boring narcissistic stockbroker whom I met at that fundraising event in December. Yeah, um, apparently our fathers are a old law school buddy, so they've been wanting to fix this up, and I think they enamored with the idea of having a potential in-law who works on Wall Street. But it's just a diner. And a dinner with enough Severn Blanc. You might seem more interested in though. And hey, the evening should pass in a daze. <sighs> My, there we go again. <laughs> No, I, I appreciate the offer, but if I drink coffee this late, I'll end up screwing up my entire sleep schedule. As if I'm going to collapse into my bed and squash the haplessly teddy bear come midnight. Hey, then I might as well fully immerse myself in the experience. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure. Thank you, but I am sure. Alright, <laughs> yeah, trash is emptied, um, and nothing needs to be cleaned, our business is done. <laughs> I've got a lot of work ahead of me, so you better, uh, you can take your leave. <laughs> Pretty as ever. No, 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 I am, I just said, um, tidiest. As ever, you're always so tidy with everything. <laughs> you know what I mean. Yes, you do. <laughs> well, look, if I had said yes, I would like some coffee. Then you would have brought me some, and then, since you know, I don't like Keurig's on account, a K-cup's exponentially filling our nation's landfill. You'd probably go all the way back to, like, Starbucks. Something to use the traditional coffee maker, get me something. Because, you know, I wouldn't, I would much rather prefer that. And you wouldn't just pour me a cup of whatever was left. Either you'd do the most for me. <laughs> of course you would. 
Or if I had said, Oh god, I would love a venti latte from Starbucks up the road. You would punch out early and drive up there in the rain to get me one. Then you'd burn rubber back on campus, so it would be hot. <laughs> Look, my point is, you don't have to always drop what you're doing to... <laughs> And fucking just do the best for me. You don't have to do that. I mean, my god, back in high school, I left something in our homeroom what was at least once a week. And by sure enough, within 30 seconds of walking down the hall to my first class, you'd run up, you'd run up to me, completely out of breath, and hand in my jacket. <laughs> Or you'd hand in my book or my bag or anything else with a dorky smile on your face. I think of it most days. I would <laughs> just have a half-hearted, oh, thanks, as payment. <laughs> but it was all you would ever seem to need, to be honest. Or how about every time I had to borrow a pencil or a calculator? <laughs> I think you had in that my uh, head... Uh, Borrow was just another word for command, commandeer. <laughs> but still, you were all too eager to supply me with that exactly what I needed. Maybe I should have mentioned that in my uh, speech at the commencement. Then again, that would have left my marginally less space for me to wax poetic maintaining on a 4.0 GPA. Whilst balancing on the obligations of being class president. Uh. <laughs> you did you did cheer, right, didn't you? <laughs> yeah. Oh hey, um speaking of our senior year, do you remember Mike? Remember? He, um, well, he was a prom date of, um, what was her name? Yeah, her. Um, well, I googled him on a whim, and apparently he was the one who caused that really big accident on the turnpike last year. Yeah, from what I've read, yeah, he had apparently been drinking and driving with a suspended license. No, 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 fa no fatalities. Um, that was a miracle. But with several wrecked cars, a few were hospitalized, and motorists <sighs> in a downed power line. I do foresee some lawsuits coming his way once he's out of jail. <laughs> Look, I was disappointed, but I can't say I was really surprised. <laughs> I remember his antics on prom night. Ditched about halfway through, I caught him outside drinking and smoking weed with his... Idiot friends. I don't know. My my mom and their mom worked together at, at the time. They thought we would make... Uh, they thought we'd be good friends. So I, you know, just kind of stayed close to him. Kind of just was his friend for a while. I guess if I wanted, um, you know, <laughs> needed like a ride or something. Or wanted someone to hang out with. He was there. <laughs> But from if I were to get stuff like that, I need to earn them. Should have just gone alone, like you did. No, um, <laughs> hey, um, thanks again though for driving me on that night. Yeah. <laughs> and since it is just um, us two here, thank you for enduring my crying. I'm sure that probably felt like the longest car ride of your life. I just... My prom date, and I really didn't, I really didn't miss her. <laughs> I really needed to burn myself out before facing my parents. You know... <laughs> your caring towards me is kind of dorky, but don't lose it, okay? <laughs> right, <laughs> um, I think it's long enough to scroll down memory lane for tonight. <laughs> like, I appreciate the break, but I still have a lot to do. And, um, 
Dude, you have a good night, all right? <laughs> Wish me luck, all right, tomorrow for my date. Ugh. <laughs> Sorry about all the clutter, though. Should be progressively uh, wilted down for the next few weeks. Oh, no, no, this isn't stuff that she brought back with her. These are boxes full of old textbooks and CDs. She would brought it from the library to archive, and that I've been working out of. <laughs> what do you think? She picked up a I Heart Grease shitten in the airport? <laughs> no. Dr. Tav is not one of those kinds of women. Uh, who's into kitschke roadside souvenirs? Well... Actually, yeah, she did find something on her expedition. Yeah, you can see it, um, but I won't tell if you won't. <laughs> Besides, I could end up on a display case at the um museum. So we both might as well have a closer look while we can, yeah? <laughs> yeah, so um, follow me, okay? Ugh, so many freaking boxes. Really should not be all here. Mira, I think it is in this box right here. I think. Okay, so like I said, Dr. Tav was in Attica this past week, right? And she did not just throw a dart at a map in Greece while wearing blindfolded. She chose Attica for a very specific reason. Like many other professors in her field. There we go. Jeez, again. Yes, I'm sure I don't need that coffee. <laughs> but as I was saying, Dr. Taff theorized that there might be some tangible evidence that the existence of superior beings that the ancient Greece and or Romans may have constructed as gods and goddesses. So they didn't really have much else to work on with what they've been trying to rationalize phenomena. They didn't understand... As uh, storms decimated a city, to blame it on a deity. And an epidemic rages, blame it on a deity. <laughs> Agrarian community produces an unusually bountiful harvest one year. Pay tribute to a deity. See the pattern here? <laughs> well, apparently Dr. Tev had read about it at an altar located just before the entrance of the Academa. Um, which itself is just outside Athens, and that had been dedicated to Greek gods, Eros. Eros was the original Greek name for the Roman god, Cupid. <laughs> yes, the Cupid. And what was his gimmick? What was the thing that he did? Right. He would fly around, shoot people, arrows at people that would make them fall in love. According to the poet Hesiod, Eros was a primordial deity who emerged self-born at the beginning of time to spur procreation, which is just a very pretentious way of saying that he fired a bunch of aphrodisiac into the backsides of people who were presumably of a consenting age. It got them to work like rabbits and preventing the human race from dying out. As such, arrows came to be known as mischievous little gods of love. <laughs> it's from the name that the word erotic was divided. Anyway, back to Dr. Tav. Uh, she had researched this altar that, and it was curious to see if there was any proof that thousands of years ago, some hair-branded alchemist really had created some primitive form of aphrodisiac. Yeah, it was so effective that he or she, we don't know, we weren't there, came to be revered as a deity or something like one. She searched every nook and cranny of this altar, didn't find a thing. No Da Vinci-style co, no fragments of old cult-like manifesto. She even checked for hidden switches or levers. <laughs> Nothing. But then, she tried something else. She brought along her old metal detector she typically uses for 
breach company in the summer. She turned it on, circled the altar for almost three hours, finally got a hit. She started digging right away. Then, technically, she didn't even have a proper paperwork or clearance to do that. So she covertly marked a spot and then came back later, under cover of darkness to excavate. She found this, buried about two feet down, maybe 50 feet away from the altar. Look. Yeah, what do you think? <laughs> Can't you tell? It's an arrow. Well, it's lost some of its integrity and virtually all of its luster by being caked and rusted. Wouldn't that make it identifying it any easier, though? <laughs> but yes, it's very old. Very corroded, almost completely okay, okay, un-recognized arrow. Sorry, <laughs> talking about this has me getting excited. See, here's the tip, or at least what was the tip both halves and still somewhat curving around, meeting at a point. Uh, albeit that is very eroded and dull. And if you follow along the shaft, meeting at one point, you'll see that the fleck, the fletching, would have been right about here, just before the nook. Apparently, she has a really good contact in the customs department, so transporting the transporting this through the states wasn't really an issue. Ordinarily, she would have bothered to go to the trouble of keeping it, and she noticed something strange, though. Traditionally, the arrowheads were made of metal. Not the entire thing. Lopiniers would fasten a stone or metal arrowhead to a wooden shaft to, you know, make carrying and firing them easier. But Dr. Tev's Tav said that this looked like it was forged from raw iron, start to finish as one single uniform object. She's going to have it radiocarbon dated, to be sure, you know. But she thinks it was created at some sort of point during Greek Iron Age, which was after the collapse of the Mycenaean civilization. So the beginning of Greek art, um, the Archaic period, sometime between 1100 and 800 BC. And according to what most mythologists have pierced together, arrows first strapped on the quiver and took flight around 700 BC. So yeah, <laughs> quite the find, actually. <laughs> um... What are your thoughts? <laughs> Excuse me? Are you... Oh my god, do you actually mean that sincerely? <laughs> you think that this is one of the arrows, like the actual arrow that belonged to the god Eros himself. Oh, come on. <laughs> you gotta be kidding me. Like, I know you're a science fiction person, but maybe you should try your hand at writing fi fantasy. <laughs> Some of your suggestions, huh? Some 80, 20, 100 years ago? <laughs> 20, 100 years ago? Eros was just flying around, making quota for his day. Then he swung by his altar to meet, greet some of his followers, got caught in a crosswind, and this slipped out of his quiver. Oh, wow. Um, okay, um, <laughs> where to start? Well, first of all, I thought that this was implying that there was never any gods or goddesses on the entire concept of mythology. Well, Greek, Roman... Chinese, Egyptian, or otherwise, is based on exactly that. Myths, legends, made up of stories, but told by primitive <laughs> people as a way of rationalizing things that couldn't explain, providing some much-needed inspiration for their creative arts. Perhaps scaring straight away any rebellious teenagers of their youth? Ah... <sighs> Second, this arrow could have been forged by any blacksmith. This is most likely the handiwork of a very hardcore fan of arrows. 
who made it as a tribute or something. No different from those Greeks who dressed up as a comic book characters and create homemade replicas of weapons. Well, for when they go to those conventions. No offense to you. <laughs> lastly, Ero lastly, as I explained, Eros was the <clears throat> god responsible for making people fall in love. Well, that con conclusively disproves a myth, since love itself wasn't even existed. Or, I'm sorry, it didn't even exist. <laughs> no, it doesn't. There's no scientific basis for love. Yes, there's an attraction, but that's a entirely separate concept. Attraction is a manifestation of impulses and urges brought on by virtual stimuli and touch. It's a programmed instinct and hardwired into our biological programming to keep us reproducing so we don't go extinct. But it's useful, and it's a genetic impulse, nothing more. You see that pile of desk over there? The pile on the desk. They are filled with writings, musings, poetry from some of the biggest names in ancient Greece. I've spent the last five hours deciphering them, and many of them just go on and on about how love is the most wonderful divine state of being that supposedly defines itself is beyond explanation. And how the most powerful force in the world for good or evil, when you take a cold hard look at from the modern day 21st century perspective, you realize how utterly quixotic and ridiculous it sounds. <laughs> okay, if I, okay, if I had to define love, then I would say it's probably a pheromone induced neuro reaction. Interpreted by the evolutionary imperative primates as the predominantly heteromotive emotion. Okay. To use the proper vernacular as in layman's terms, the combination of attraction and convenience. <laughs> Why do people get married then? Well, the only reason they're sane. Rational human beings get married is to combine their wealth and help each other advance socially. <laughs> well, look at my parents will tell you that. They have openly and unapologetically admitted to not loving each other. They were still... <laughs> they still are two people with mutual goals that they could only have reached by working together as a wedding partnership. They're loyal, they respect each other, and they have a child. They take their marriage very seriously, but they have every intention of remaining together. But all that, that's all there is to it. <laughs> I think you were brought up way on way too many times of uh, Disney movies back in the day. Contrary to the belief of swooping in to rescue damsel in distress, riding off in a pumpkin to live happily ever after. It's cliche plot device. Cooked up by members of uh, the SAG and the AFTRA as a means of selling tickets, books, and DVDs. <laughs> I'm not mocking your romantic side. I'm just trying to set you straight, trying to spare you what the grim reality of realizing that despite everything we've ever read in stories or seen in the movies, that's supposed to be great. Mystical power that does not exist, and if it did, you really think getting nailed with an arrow would cause something so wonderfully beautiful and ethereal just to poof into existence? <laughs> exactly. It's time to grow up. You know, I should probably move this somewhere else. <laughs> yeah. Um. Because I think it's a it's in a plain, nondescript cardboard box with a pile of other plain, nondescript cardboard boxes. Dr. Tav would have been... <sighs> would have had my head if someone from the facilities took this out of her office. And lost it. <laughs> Let's see, how about... 
Oh, her desk. Perfect. It'll fit on one of the bigger drawers in the bottom. Facilities would never go there. Yep, I just almost there in oh, 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 oh. <sighs> ow, ow. Oh, God, ow. The arrow I landed on the arrow, it stabbed me. My leg it's my leg, it's in my leg. Ow. Uh, what are you? Yeah, yeah, okay, just sit me down on the sofa, okay? I was trying to maneuver around the box and I couldn't balance these stupid shoes. I need to get some new shoes. I caught my foot on a corner and I... Yeah, yeah, you're right. Just gotta stay calm and... I'll keep putting a direct pressure on it, alright? Wait, where are you going? Don't... Don't leave me. You're gonna get a first aid kit. Okay. Yeah, just, well, I, I kinda need that. <laughs> you gotta, listen, you gotta take me to the emergency room tonight, alright? Seriously, I felt that thing go at least an inch into my thigh. And it was rusted and it was dirty. I might get tetanus. <laughs> right, right, right. Just kinda... Stay calm, and after you clean the bandage of the wound, and we can, can we just get in your car and go? And, okay. Thank you so much. No, the arrow stabbed me right here. So I need to hike up my skirt. <sighs> yeah, hike up my shirt. Just, please, just keep your eyes on the sockets. Oh. Yeah, my hand is flat over where it got me, yeah? Oh, when I take it off, just quickly spray some disinfectant and slap a bandage on. It's gonna hurt like a bitch, but... We don't need air. We don't have a choice. Okay? On three. One. Two. Three. Uh, what? How? Yeah, of course it stabbed me. I felt it stab into me. And it pelled me right there. I, fe I, I felt it. Yeah, I can see there's no blood, alright? I'm trying to figure that out, too. The, the skin's not even... It's not even broken. Uh, the point was dull, but... Look, it, it, went, it went through my pants. Look. That's where it went through. I should have just gone... Gone. Actually, no, it doesn't hurt anymore. But that's because I must—I must be in shock, obviously. Could you check the arrow if it had any blood on it? Yeah, thank you. And for God's sake, please be careful. N no blood. You're sure. I'll just put it back in the box then, okay? Should have never taken it out in the first place. I guess it didn't stab me. It just poked me really hard. Sure felt like it broke the skin, though. Yeah, good idea. <laughs> Should probably sterilize the area anyway, just to be on the safe side. <sighs> Dang, my pants are destroyed now. Got through my boxers. There we go. <laughs> they weren't my color anyway, it's fine. So, whenever you're ready. No, the alcohol isn't even stinging a little bit. Definitely did not break the skin. <laughs> no, I'm fine. The pain is totally gone. What? Is it getting hot in here? Do you? No? It's probably just the adrenaline then. Oh, oh I still feel kind of hot. Actually, sweating a little bit. <laughs> yeah, of course. Um, nice deep breaths. Or would you um blow on it? My leg. Um, 
to get the alcohol ev evaporated faster. Uh, yes. <laughs> yeah. Sorry, I didn't mean to mean it like that. Just felt nice. Okay, now I'm really sweating. <laughs> oh, you know what? What the hell? I don't know why I'm overheating, but I've got to take my pants off. You're already getting... You're already... Kind of already saw my boxers, so it's not really a big deal. Both adults, and we've known each other for years. There, much better. Only now my heart is racing a little bit. Here, give me your hand. Feel that? Uh, sorry, sorry. I didn't mean to make things awkward. I, I don't know what's coming over me. Hey, can I ask you something? You, um, can you do something to your hair? <laughs> well, no, it's just that when you picked me up, I kind of saw it. and Yeah, when you helped me up, I just seemed different. Yeah, but you just yeah you just helped me up though. That was all. <laughs> Using a different perfume too. I got a good smell. <laughs> it's cute how modest you are, you know. I think it's great that you uh, you know take care of yourself and take care of me. You know, you were really pretty just now. I mean, I saw you reach out to grab me when you realized uh, I was about to fall. And when I did, you immediately helped me up and carried me over here. <laughs> you didn't even hesitate. You just went right as soon as you saw your best friend falling. No, oh, I don't believe that what you did, what anyone would have done. Not anyone could be so attuned and caring for me. I know I teased you, right? You know I just teased you. Well, you know, I do it because <laughs> I think you're amazing and I think you're wonderful. I... I... I love you. I... I love you. Why did you, why did you pull away? Not thinking clearly. I have not, never been thinking more clearly in my entire life. I love you. I don't have a single doubt. I, I love you. With all my heart, my body, my mind, my soul. No, no, it's alright. This is what I want. You are what I want. <laughs> you have no idea. You do not understand. I love you. I have always loved you. I've had feelings for you since we met. Yes, you couldn't tell? All hints I would drop, the games I'd play. <laughs> Don't be so naive, come on. You really think I was forgetful enough to leave something behind in our homeroom that often? I did it on purpose, you goof. Because you sat right behind me and you were too shy to strike up a conversation. I knew I had to come up with something to make you. Don't you get it? I was addicted to hearing your footsteps running on to me. Or the feeling of your hand on my shoulder. If I had just one look at your gorgeous smile and your beautiful eyes in the morning... I would be a cloud nine for hours for the rest of the day. But some days, oh, some days one of our classmates would beat you to it. And I had to settle for borrowing something of yours later. We could have a little interaction. <laughs> Why do you think that I fought so hard to be student council, you know? Because the head... <sighs> The head tree there. The head football <laughs> team would always try to get to you. 
<laughs> I thought I knew I had to somehow get to a higher power to be, to be with you. <laughs> oh, I'm prom night. I wasn't crying because I got dished and humiliated. I was crying because the person I should have gone with was you. I was crying because my own cowardice cheated me out of a perfect evening. I never ever had anything to say because I was too scared. My parents never thought that that would approve of us dating. I don't care about any of that now. You're exactly who I want. I want to be with... I love how sweet you are. How responsible you are. How funny, hardworking, and how smart you are. How creative and you meet every one of my needs. Mental, emotional, spiritual, and especially physical. But my love for you is to remain forever un... un... ungiven. So be it. If you do not share my feelings, and I will respect your choice. Contentedly resign my heart that accepting a love that is soft and undying of purely epigetic. So I guess the only question to ask is, do you love me? Yeah, years. You've you've shared feelings for years. Oh, darling, my beloved. I nothing more needs to be said. Hey guys, so we're here. Um, so I thought it was a long one. <laughs> if you guys enjoy it, I might apologize if I um, messed up any um, pronouns or gender specific mentions I might didn't notice or words I didn't mention, right? If you guys enjoy this, you can let, me, let me know what you think is fine. Um, I'm very tired. This audio took a lot of me. I don't know why I'm so tired. <laughs> but if you guys enjoy it, let me know what you think is fine. And as always, bye bye.